Agnosticism. Agnosticism is the position of believing that knowledge of the existence or non-existence of a god or gods is impossible. Agnosticism is skepticism regarding all things theological. Up until defined by Thomas Henry Huxley in 1871, agnosticism was put in the same category as atheism. However, there is a distinct difference between the two, and that is that atheists believe that there is no god or a higher power. While not denying the possibility, agnostics believe that there is not enough information to believe that there is or is not a god. Until classified, Christian thinkers would classify agnosticism with genosticism, which said that the humans were individual divine souls who were trapped in a material world. This is where agnosticism got its name. In Latin, a means without and genos means knowledge, so combined they would roughly translate to agnosticism, without knowledge. The creator of the definition and first to publicly discuss agnosticism was Thomas Henry Huxley. Huxley was born in England on May 4, 1825, and although both his parents were educators, he was raised with no formal education until attending Charing Cross Hospital, where he graduated in 1845. Huxley was a strong believer in the evolution of humans and got very involved with the theory when he met Charles Darwin in 1851. Darwin, Darwin who publicly introduced the theory of evolution, was put under strong public scrutiny and was in need of someone to come in his defense. Huxley took the challenge on by becoming Darwin's number one defender against anti-evolutionists in 1959. In addition to defending Darwin's theories of evolution, Huxley also took on teaching as a profession. He taught at the Royal College of Surgeons, the Royal Institute, and the Royal School of Mines. By becoming a well-known educator, as well as a very intelligent human being, Huxley was elected to serve on the first London School Board. Huxley used this position of influence to promote the study of biology. Feeling a need to be able to classify his feelings on evolution and religion, Huxley began seeking advice from a friend named Charles Kingsley. Kingsley was an English novelist who was also sympathetic to Darwin's theories on evolution. In a letter written in 1860, Huxley wrote an about an inability to know whether or not to believe something that is non-trivial. An example of trivial would be mathematics. In other words, something that can or cannot be proven factually. Huxley had a hard time defining his religious beliefs because what people are told about religion does not contain any strong evidence. In another letter written to Kingsley in 1863, he wrote that a Christian thinker would refer to him as an infidel or an atheist. Huxley did not feel that this label was appropriate. Although he did not find the evidence to support the Christian religion, he did not deny the possibility of its factuality. He felt that this was a rising issue and that it was up to him to defend himself and other dogmatic thinkers. In this letter, he challenged Kingsley by saying, Matter and force is all we can see in certainty. Huxley requested that he be supplied with any proof to make him think or believe otherwise. This was a direct introduction to his feelings of agnosticism. In rousing criticism, an agnostic would claim that biblical writings are most likely not true, but a Christian thinker would claim the dogmatic thinker to be calling Christ a liar. But suppose the value of the evidence as to what Jesus may have said and done, and as to the exact nature and scope of his authority, is just that which the agnostic finds the most difficult to determine. Huxley believed that you cannot argue that a person is denying what Jesus said before the preliminary question of what he did say is settled. This is because the way that these stories, or facts, depending on how you view it, did not come to us in any provable manner. Jesus and Muhammad are based on a series of passed down stories that were created when oral history was more common than written. Since there is no proof in either direction, an agnostic cannot pick one as true.
Basically what Huxley is saying is that with no actual proof put in front of him, he is unable to form an opinion in either direction. Although so much can be proven, this being thought as fact for so many years cannot. One major part of the Christian religion that Huxley attacked was the fifth chapter of the second gospel. Huxley believes that if Jesus of Nazareth is responsible for the death of the pigs, then this would be not only criminal, but also immoral. However, no inkling of legality or morality ever manifests itself in the readings. He supports his feelings by noting that throughout documented history, it was illegal to possess any knowledge or any form of witchcraft. And it is proven, through pathology and modern science, that there is no historical accounts of any person ever actually being possessed. He believes the major issue is that people will accept the stories without any strict scrutiny on what it actually means. If the information provided to us in the Christian faith over time have lost validity and truth, what is there for evidence to support what it is that Jesus actually said, if he said anything at all? There is no proof that the Gospels in an authorized version of the Bible ever existed. Since the New Testament was written in the 4th and 5th century, there is no way we can accept these stories as factual. This is proven because up until this time, oral tradition was considered to be more fixed and believed to contain more validity than written history. There is no way to say what was added or taken out of these stories as they were passed down over the years, since the selection for the New Testament was only one of many historical stories. This was supported by Sir Walter Scott when he said a story cannot be told without giving it a hat and a stick. In other words, adding and subtracting from the story as it is retold. Huxley uses this as a proof that there is no proof in what we will read today in the New Testament. Huxley wants his readers to consider the rule of prima facie, or the rule of common sense. This says that you can only trust a person's words when there is no self-interest, passion, prejudice, nor love for the marvelous existing with the person. The person with the information must be able to supply solid corroborative evidence to support their claims. This would be based on the probability of the thing that is testified. Should we accept Jesus of the second or the fourth gospel? If there is validity to the writings, why do the historical facts change? You cannot prove what he said since there is no way to say how much of it was prettied up by his followers and the storytellers from the time it was said and the time it was written. Huxley refuses to believe any of the written religion until he sees some evidence to make him think or believe otherwise and is offended that this view would be placed with the label of infidel on him by a theist thinker. Since Jesus' followers were in a sense just Jews acting differently than other Jewish people, who is qualified to define Christianity? To a Jewish person, these followers would be classified as infidels. Although Christianity is taught as fact, there is no real way to tell whether the 39 articles are right or wrong. They diverge from the primitive doctrine of the Nazarenes and vastly more than Pauline Christianity. If Huxley is considered an infidel, he first wants to know which doctrine he is supposed to follow. He notes that if the Apostles' Creed was to be brought upon the Nazarenes of year 40, they likely would have stoned the man bringing these facts. Huxley feels he cannot label himself infidel just because his views differ from Christianity and Mohammedans. Huxley, like many other philosophers of his time, took a lot of his influence from David Hume and Immanuel Kant. Kant was a major contributor to philosophy in metaphysics, epistemology, ethics, and atheism. Hume, another philosopher, criticized the standard proofs for God's existence, traditional notions of God's nature, and divine governance, the connection between morality and our popular religious beliefs and rationality of belief in miracles. He learned from these men the philosophy does not discover truth, rather it has only the modest merit of preventing error. Philosophy won't give you answers but rather make you avoid false conclusions. When Huxley lived in England he began attending meetings of the Metaphysical Society. 
This was a com this was commonly referred to as the organization of the ists. This was a place where educated men would get together and discuss philosophical ideas. Huxley felt the men here, although welcoming, hid behind their titles. Huxley did not yet have a label for himself when he began attending. At these meetings was where he first tested the use of the word agnostic, and to his surprise, it was almost immediately accepted. <laughs> ¶¶